say what's going on. Talk about training VO2 max by power or heart rate. And I think both are very valid to start off, but I think there's a couple of reasons why you want to use both metrics. I had a couple interesting comments from the TikTok and Instagram reel that I posted about this, asking people what did they do. And one thing, you know, this might surprise people when they hear that I'm saying I do even look at heart rate on VO2 max because I've definitely come more from the school of power. You know, I was trained to go do five by fives by power, whole consistent power. We now know that that's maybe not always the best way to do it because to elicit these VO2 max adaptations, there are papers out there that show, hey, if you can get to 90% heart rate max and hold it there, you're going to get adaptations from that. So you could go out and do a hard start, maybe 30 seconds at, <clears throat> excuse me, end of COVID cough, Ugh. at the high end of VO2 max, something that you wouldn't be able to maintain for a full five minutes. But then after 30 to 45 seconds, feather it down to very high threshold, just above threshold. And honestly, it can be in threshold as long as your heart rate stays within that 90% plus. So it would be obviously very helpful to have heart rate on your display and know what your 90% number is. I know if I'm at 160, I'm getting 90% heart rate max. Now is 95% better? It's impossible to know. It, you can't compare it, maybe. Um, some say yes, some say no. I don't, you know, many, many years down the road, maybe we'll have that answer. But I also think that my issue with that is, the, the plus side is, let me start with the plus. The other day I went out and I'm in visiting Rochester, New York, and I was on some routes that I did not know. I was not doing these on like my VO2 max hill in North Carolina. And I hit a, so a road had just been graveled. So I didn't want to ride on it. So I U-turned. So my power obviously goes down. You know, I'm getting some extra rest, but my heart rate was still jacked up. So I just smashed it again. And these are those un undulating VO2 max intervals that we've talked about, whether it's a hard start, whether it's go hard, feather it down, watch your heart rate, spike it again, just watch your heart rate. And you can do that for eight or nine minutes. Those are really good. And longer, I think is very beneficial power. You wouldn't be able to do that with like a five minute interval power. You're not gonna be able to hold for eight minutes. So there was benefit to that. Hey, I'm just going to do these by heart rate today. And also it was the first time I had gone hard, hard in three weeks since getting COVID. So my legs were not holding five minute power five times. And so I said, okay, Hey, I'm doing these by heart rate. I'm going to get some benefit. This is a good session. That being said, I truly believe from anecdotal evidence of myself, from athletes I've talked to, and from a couple other things that we'll get into, if you're only going by heart rate and you're only doing these hard starts, or even if you're doing, you know, the reason you do the hard start is because it gets the VO2 going faster because your heart rate gets up higher faster. If you're only doing that and you're never riding at 120% for longer, you're just spiking your heart rate and then letting yourself ride at 105, 110. I think that's a recipe for getting dropped on certain road race scenarios. And I swear there are times when, when the break is forming and we are hitting it and you see someone just like, oh, man and they almost need to stop pedaling or go a little bit easier and the rubber band for them snaps it's like see ya i often wonder are they just not doing full blast vo2 power for long durations of time i know a lot of people that do like three minute ones i don't think that's long enough i think if you want a road race and if you want to be at the pointy end of a gravel race you need to do some longer efforts and so that in itself is the number one reason why i would say you five by fives, classic, go hit 115 to 120% or whatever you can hold five times in a row, or maybe you get three good ones. And the fourth, you almost die and you come back, you know, 10 days later and you try it again and you just try and build up that muscular strength, but also that ability to truly push high Watts. I think that is very valid. And now if you look at the heart rate, I should go back and I can't even remember from the video I posted a long time ago, maybe a year and a half ago on YouTube about comparing different VO2 max intervals. I was comparing them by, by wattage 
by power. I wasn't, I did a little, I looked at heart rate a little bit, but that wasn't the main metric because I believed in power even more than now. I think so heart rate really good to increase the amount of oxygenated blood that you can push to your muscles that are pedaling your bike go by heart rate. The true application also of pedaling really freaking hard in a race to stay at the pointy end, you need to push Watts very valid to do some hard starts and constant power, or I was going to say do a hard start, but still do a hard start. That's not 130% do a hard start. That's maybe 120 and let yourself drop to like 115 right above super threshold. You know, when my threshold it's, it varies. I mean, everyone's threshold is changing every day between 400 to 415, usually right around 410. I want to be able to climb and do hard eight to 15 minute efforts at 440. And actually I should look right now, what is my 15 minute? Let me gut check myself here over the past 90 days. I'm trying to think, was I in blowing rock? Cause that's when it's the best. 15 minutes, 433, eight minutes, I'm doing 450. So that's even higher than 110%. You need to be doing super threshold stuff. And then my last little piece of this anecdotal podcast, this is just, do I have a study? It always amazes me when people are like, well, where's the study to prove this? What was the last, there was a study that they were just talking about and it was a four blocks of training. Oh, what podcast was this on? And they said the craziest thing was Think about how hard it is to get athletes to follow four weeks of training, let alone 16 weeks of training for a study, because athletes, they want to do what they know works for them and what they think works for them and what their coach has them doing. And I'm thinking it's amazing if 16 weeks is that long and that crazy of a study duration, think about your own training. Like you need time for the effects to take place. So even if it was only eight weeks, getting people to follow an exact protocol for eight weeks is really hard. How do people expect there to be a study for everything? There's not. You need to talk to other athletes. You need to get in our Discord and talk to athletes. You need to, I mean, it, it just blows my mind. I'm like, I don't believe it. Where's a study? There's not a study for everything in endurance sports. There's really good ones. But, you know, to play devil's advocate to the science, just a few years ago, when I was cycling, this isn't like 30 years ago, they were telling us eat 60 grams of carbs an hour. <laughs> we know how low that is. Thank God I was eating more because I just, I was eating more and I wasn't gaining weight. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to eat a little bit. I'm eating more. And I always put it on. I'm just a bigger guy. So I need more food. No, your body can absorb more carbs. So that's a tangent. Here's the, the last piece of this. When I have talked about doing the over-unders to increase your FTP. If you haven't seen that somewhere else on our channel, maybe I'll put a link or something, but that's definitely more efficient at or more optimized to increase your FTP. The real world um, execution of this though, when I went to smash out a 20 minute effort, when I had only been doing over-unders, my body was wanting to do the over, under, over, under, over, under the tolerating of the lactate. It was not so good at, and that is the exact damn thing of doing constant power, five minute, four minute, six minute intervals. I think you want to do both undulating longer ones, undulating hard start, five minute ones, constant power, five minute ones. The more and more we talk about training, the more and more we hear really solid cases for variety and that there's a place for everything in your training, even sweet spot. I got a good podcast I did with Tom Bell. It's actually, we did two parts because we just jumped into a conversation about a bunch of things. And then we were like, wait, we need to do this podcast. And so then we recorded the actual podcast. So we'll have two with Tom coming up soon. Um, I'm going to get one with my new coach, Landry. We are kicking things off soon and we're going to do some bike radios. He's kind of taking over for Josh and talking all things training and racing. And then um, I'm going to put it out there. Craig and I are starting a new podcast called Evolve that is going to be a little bit different than Evoke. We're obviously going to talk about cycling because cycling is amazing. And 
But there's other things that we want to talk about on a podcast. And Craig is a really unique guy, former Army Ranger. And you kind of know me through this podcast. So we went out to VCon and just some different things in life going on. Um, so yeah, everybody stay safe. When I got COVID, I was laying in bed and I was like, I'm not, I don't, why am I riding? This is so weird. Why do I ride so much? I'm never doing a four hour ride during the weekend. <laughs> that was so stupid. I had an amazing ride today. Check out the pictures on Instagram, upstate New York roads. While we only have them without snow for about three months, they are damn good while they are kicking. So hopefully this, this podcast and video, what's up to the YouTube people, helps you find some more direction with your VO2 max training and understanding whether you should be following heart rate or going by power. Both are very valid, makes you get the variation in there. And then really think about the application to your event. I think that is just so important to do. Let's crush, ride hard, um, and say, cross your fingers that I can get this freaking gravel seat post unseized so I can go do funk bottoms in Ohio with Bodo. It would be sick. And I'm also kind of nervous because it's 130 miles and I haven't ridden that far in a while. The end.